Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're taking a look at a steam jacket kettle. And this particular kettle was taken out of service. I don't know if there's anything failed inside the steam jacket portion, but overall the unit was pretty beat up. And our, our build date shows us that this thing was over 20 years old. Uh, so let's take a look inside and see what we've got. The first thing to note here is on our data plate, this is a pressure vessel. This heats up, it builds pressure, so it has ratings to be a pressure vessel. It's been certified. Knowing that it's a pressure vessel, there's a couple things we have to have on it. One of them is missing. There should be a pressure gauge here, but it's been removed. Down inside is some iron debris, and then we have a safety relief valve. And this relief valve has broken, but it should have a pull ring so that you can bleed the, the kettle off. This also has a check valve and a pipe fitting added so that you could add uh, water to the steam jacket. Now, one of the things we'll run into as we get into this teardown is uh, this will have water in it. I fully expect it to still have water down inside. Over on this side, we have a sight glass, which we can't, really, we can't really see anything inside the sight glass. It's pretty well worn out. And then we've got a thermostat. Now this thermostat does not turn freely, it's, it's bound up. But that thermostat would control the temperature for the kettle. Electrically, we've got, oh, I got a spider come out of, there's a spider going across the bench. Sorry, bud. Uh, electrically, we've got the, the supplies for our heating elements, which are these heavy high temp wires. And then we've got some of our control wiring here. And we'll see once we get into the bottom of the kettle what exactly we've got. So the way that these work, you have a sealed pressure vessel chamber down here at the bottom and there's a heating element inside it. And you put your load, whatever you're cooking, soups or stocks, whatever you're making, into this upper part of the kettle. And when you turn heat on, the heating element begins to heat that water that's down in the bottom, and it condenses it onto the inside lower portion of the steam jacket. And you can see here, the line where that heat cuts off matches up with the line for our steam jacket. We've got scale buildup in here, so whatever they were previously cooking in it had a lot of minerals in it. But that water, because it's constantly steaming and condensing down on this lower jacket portion, uh, it's really critical that it not have any impurities in it that can be left behind on the heating elements. So these always have to have distilled water in them with no mineral content. Now additionally, some kettles also call for a rust inhibitor to go into that water as well. When the kettle is cold, the pressure gauge should be showing that the jacket is in a vacuum. And that vacuum is, is critical to how the kettle functions and for it to be able to regulate temperature into what you're cooking correctly. If it doesn't show a vacuum, chances are there's a leak somewhere in this part of the kettle. The most common area for leaks is the relief valve, but the relief valve should never be plugged. Because this is a pressure vessel, it's critical that the relief valve be able to vent if the pressure gets too high. And in this case, the relief valve has a rating on it, but we can't actually read the rating. I think it's 50 PSI, but it's very hard to see on the tag. When we look at the ratings up here on the data plate, we can see 50 PSI at 300 degrees Fahrenheit is the maximum that this vessel's rated for. So as we're working with it, I expect some fluids to come out. But let's tip it over and look in the bottom and see, what, see what's underneath. This lowest portion of the kettle is not a part of the pressure vessel, even though it is welded together. This just has electrical components in it. So when we look inside the lower part here, you can see our thermostat. 
a thermostat feeds a capillary tube into the pressure vessel itself. All of our electric heating element connections, and those actually are, are welded into the kettle themselves. They're, they're fitted together. And then we've also got a pressure switch that's tied into the very bottom. And the, the pressure switch is wired through that heat circuit, so that pressure switch is able to interrupt the heat circuit just like the thermostat can. As far as how we control the power to these electric heating elements, we would have had a contactor mounted in the base of the equipment, and that contactor would have been connected to our heating element wires that come out through the tilt mechanism. So now that we've seen inside there, we're actually going to make a cutaway of this particular piece of equipment. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start by drilling some pilot holes into our steam jacket, and then we're going to cut the metal away from the steam jacket and open up so we can see inside. Before we drill, it's important to note that this vessel's not under pressure right now. It is open to atmosphere and we have some of the plumbing and fixtures already opened up. There's no risk here in terms of drilling into the jacket. Once we do this, the kettle can never go back into service again. We're going to compromise the pressure vessel so that we can see what's inside. PPE is very important for a project like this, so we're going to be using some eye protection, some hearing protection, and obviously the gloves so that we're working safely as we cut this jacket apart. So now you can see inside the kettle, you can see the heating element here in the middle. There's a water level probe back in the back there. Our thermostat comes up over here in this coiled up assembly. We threw a lot of dust in the process of cutting this open, but something to notice here is this mud that's caked on the inside. And that's really a sign that this was not filled with the correct fluid during its life. So our normal level of water in the jacket would be right about here and you can kind of see that here in the discoloration of the uh, kettle jacket so our, our fluid level would have been about here during operation if we talk about how this would have worked the basic principle here is we want to boil that water to steam and then we want that steam to condense on the outside of our kettle here and when it condenses, it transfers that heat back through into the wall of this kettle. So let's take a few minutes and talk about the, the water level probe back here in the corner. This is a really critical part of the equipment. And the way this works is it's making sure that the water level inside the kettle jacket is actually up to the top part of the probe here. Now, if you look underneath, down inside here, it's only got a single wire attached. And you can sort of see this blue wire is attached to it behind the heating element. With a single wire attached to it, what it's doing is using electrical current to detect that we have water at the tip here. And it's 
it's using that small current pathway to the ground of the shell. So the question is why is it important to make sure we have water in here? Well we know that one of the failure points can be the, the coiled element here and that it's basically impossible to replace if it were to fail. So it's really critical to make sure that the element is, is covered with water before we heat. Now, with this being a tilt kettle, part of its regular operation is that it tilts. It turns over on its side so you can pour what's inside the kettle out. And given that it's, it's designed to tilt, we have to make sure that it's back to its primary position before it starts heating. So this water level probe serves two purposes here. The first one is that it makes sure there's actually water in the jacket before we start heating. The second is that we're sure that we're back to a, a level position. Now you may also have a, a safety switch on the tilt mechanism itself that's designed to act like an interlock so that if the kettle starts to tilt it disengages the heat circuit at the contactor. But in this case this also does some of that as well. If we tilt it far enough for the water to uncover the, the tip here we lose that continuity to ground and the water level control would then open the heat circuit and prevent the element from heating. Because part of our water level probe circuit relies on a current path to ground, we also have a, a ground on a lug over here. And when we talk about ways this unit can, can have problems or things that can fail, the connection down here being loose like this would almost certainly cause heating problems. Bad grounds could cause problems. But even just build up on the end of this probe could cause problems. If we had any kind of scale build up happen on the end of this, we would have problems passing that current to ground. If your kettle is old enough, you may also have a mercury tilt switch mounted somewhere down inside to make sure that this is upright before it starts heating. When we talk about how these can fail, the, the basic failures are, are straightforward. Uh, you can wear out the contactor that drives the heating elements. You can wear out the thermostat. You, you may have issues with the pressure switch or the temperature probe. Uh, the biggest are probably these relief valves or the pressure gauges because they're hanging out. They get hit or they get abused. They get cracked or damaged. Or this pressure relief may start to leak. Uh, in the event that this pressure relief starts to leak, it's really critical that it get replaced so that it's working properly. Uh, obviously this one, this one was broken. It should have been replaced if this was going to be left in service. It's also super critical to keep water in this lower part of the kettle jack. If this element becomes uncovered, like if the fluid level for whatever reason was too low, and this were to dry fire, instead of driving its heat energy into water, it drove into air, and that would cause this element to melt. If this element were to melt, the kettle's basically junk, because as you can see, it's, it's been welded in. There's no way to replace this in the field. Some of the other failures you might see. Some kettles have a, a gear-driven tilt mechanism or a power tilt mechanism, and you can occasionally see issues in that where either the motor drive is worn out or bound up or uh, a keyway has sheared. You'll occasionally see something like that. But overall, steam, steam jacket kettles are very reliable. There are basically no moving parts inside the majority of the system. So once they're in service, they're usually good to just leave alone. They don't need much attention after that. Just make sure you fill it with distilled water. All right, I think that'll wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hi, folks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, here's a few others you might like. If you want to keep up with my other projects, make sure to sign up for the email list using the link in the description. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel.